Hello there! It looks like you've joined me for an episode in the series of Civilization V Brave New World. It's me, Daniel, Onion Grave 64, or Civil Onion based upon how you know me. And what we're going to do, we're going to go through Brave New World, the second expansion pack for Civilization V, with Casimir III of the Polish Empire. His ability revolves getting a free social policy per era. That's pretty much a free social policy tree throughout the game, that's nice. If you don't understand what I'm on about by the way, I will be explaining things very simply as we go along, assuming you actually haven't played the game in the slightest. The Winged Hussar is a Lancer unit, which is basically a horse with a javelin, uh, and it specialises in defeating other horse based units. It's faster than the regular Lancer it replaces, and it has the ability where it can force units it attacks to retreat if it does more damage to them than vice versa. The unique stable we have provides production and gold, costs no maintenance, and is overall very useful in conjunction with our unique unit. So let's begin with the very much the basics. What the hell are we trying to achieve here? We have a settler. These are our people, our population if you will, and they wish to form a city because we need a city to start growing. Next to that here, we have a warrior. The warrior unit will obviously attack and defend for you. It can find ruins and search them for positivity and growth. Uh, but what we're gonna do right now is move around with it and see if we can find anything of note. Our start here doesn't look particularly awe-inspiring. Near us, we have wheat incense and wine they're all pretty useful we also have deer and you may see for example the fish here that's not useful for this settler because let's say we settled a city right in place if we did that we could only work tiles up to three tiles away from the city so say we put that in place we could work the wheat to the southeast because it is three tiles away the fish however is four therefore we could not work it now I'm not particularly enthralled with where we have started, so what we're going to do is move over here and we might settle somewhere over there. This may turn out to be an absolutely terrible decision, but at this point in time we genuinely don't know. So we're moving on to turn two. Um, we still haven't seen anything that's particularly of interest to us, so we're going to settle here. To found a city, we click B. And we now have the city of Warsaw. That is our capital, as you can tell from the star symbol there. We need to choose our research. It's very important science in this game because you're trying to research technologies that make you ahead of the game compared to other civilizations. What we're going to do, we're going to choose writing. Here is the big technology tree. To explain how it works roughly, look at trapping here. In order to unlock trapping, we must complete animal husbandry because that is what connects it together. However, if we wanted the wheel, we would have to research animal husbandry and archery because they both connect together on the big spider web. As you can see here, there are a lot of technologies to research. Uh, we can get XCOM units if you play Enemy Unknown, you'll obviously know a lot about them. Or you can just get giant death robots, which are exactly what they say on the tin. However, at this stage in proceedings, we're starting with much more humble things like archers and boats. So we've chosen what we're going to research to. And we now have to decide what Warsaw will do. And we're going to build a monument. Monuments provide culture. Let's quickly explain what culture does. The more culture you have, the more tiles you can work, the quicker you'll achieve new tiles. Notice how the incense has a purpley pink uh, box around it. The reason for that is because that is the next tile the city will get for you when it gets a certain amount of culture. For the first new tile, the amount you need is 45, and we're only getting one a turn. A monument provides two extra per turn, but it costs one gold maintenance. That obviously means that your income will drop by one. Its cost is 120 hammers. Warsaw is producing five hammers per turn, two from the terrain and three from buildings. The palace, which is in your capital, provides three production. This is why capitals are so important, because the palace is unique to your capital and provides quite nice bonuses. We can choose how many tiles we can work based upon our population. Warsaw has one population, so it can work one tile. 
we're going to choose to lock in the wheat because it provides two food and one hammer. To get more population, you have to get a lot of food. And as you can see in the top left corner, it's 23 turns until a new citizen is made. Obviously, a larger population is a better population almost all the time. We'll explain when it isn't when we get to it. So we're now at the start of the game. And what we need, what's the priority for the start of the game usually? Look around, try and find ancient ruins because they're full of potential goodies. Uh, so far, we've been pretty unlucky, it has to be said. Haven't found anything. There we go, that's an example of an ancient ruin. Go into them and you can unlock a secret. We don't know what it is, and one civilization can choose what that bonus is, but we're not that one. Unfortunately, we probably got the worst choice of all, a badly drawn map. So as you can see, we can see more of the map than we could before. Um, I'll be honest, it's not the choice I would go for. You can get a lot of things, but that's not the one I would want. Anyway, let's keep researching because we need to find some useful terrain to work. Let's talk about movement actually while we're on it. You can see the warrior has movement 2 of 2, but if I click to move using the M button, you can see that if I try to move west, I can only move west one tile. That's because it takes more than one move point to move through forest. It's also the case for hills, jungle, swamps, and you can't go through mountains at all, usually, there are exceptions. But because this plane is a movement of one, we're going to move that direction. And we've found a barbarian encampment. That is exactly what you think it is. Barbarians are very dangerous, potentially, and will attack you usually if they believe they can do some reasonable damage. Their preference, though, is to go into your city and damage what you've built. Uh, we're going we're gonna to ignore that for now. It's not in our interest to attack it. It's much more in our interest to try and find some good tiles and ancient ruins, like that one there. Quickly to explain about the tile yields. We've come across desert tiles here, and there are no tile yields on it. That is because desert does not give you any useful things at all at this point in time. When we research bronze working, for example, we can identify iron. And iron might be in desert. It might be in pretty much any tile. But it would then at least have a yield, the desert. In our ancient room, we've found 60 culture. In a few turns, I will show you what the other use of culture is that I didn't show you in the first place. For now, we're going to keep exploring. And hey, there's a civilization near... Oh, there's two. Because that is Rome. That's hey, Augustus Salute. Caesar. Augustus he is one of our opposing civilizations. Maximus um, he is very powerful early game, so we need to be wary about that. And we've got another new civilization down here, and this is actually new in Brave New World, Shaka Zulu. Um, if you've played civilization games in the past, you will know what reputation this guy brings. He is a very aggressive character. We've actually been a bit unlucky. Rome was very aggressive early game. The Zulu are very aggressive early game. Um, we're not going to have a passive map, let's put it that way. Luckily though, because this is a donut map, that's the type of map I picked just for a bit of variety, we're not too close to Shaka via land. We're quite close to him via sea, but via land we're okay. Now, we've got enough culture to adopt a social policy. Bear with me here, this looks incredibly complicated. I appreciate that. There are lots of social policy trees, some of which are locked because we haven't got technologically advanced enough yet to even understand what they are. For example, in 3760 BC, we don't understand rationalism and science. That's just too far ahead of the game. What we do understand immediately is tradition, liberty, honour and piety. Piety obviously being all about religion. Honour being all about war mongering and uh, disposing in particular of barbarians. Liberty, about being expansionistic and really producing a lot of cities. And tradition, where you don't produce many cities, but you beef them up as much as you can. Now what we're going to do is adopt tradition immediately. Why? It gives our capital three extra culture. That will give us more tiles sooner, and it will also mean we get our next social policy more quickly. Our social policy, we now require 100 for the next policy. It goes up um, over time as you get more policies and more cities, in fact but they can really help improve an empire. Next door to that is uh, the Golden Age Progress, which is linked to the one to the further to the left, happiness. If your empire is happy, good. Keep it that way if you can. 
the amount of happiness you get goes towards your golden age. Golden age, um, as you may know if you studied history, for something, for example, like the Dutch and the Renaissance era, they had a big golden age. The golden age gives you extra culture and it gives you extra production and gives you extra gold as well. So obviously you want to do that. If your empire is unhappy, your cities don't grow very well, uh, your units don't fight very well in combat, and you can't build your buildings very quickly either. It's a very big negative to have unhappiness. Unhappiness occurs when your populations grow and when you get new cities, or if you take over other people's cities, generally you're not um, seen as a particularly nice guy for doing that for obvious reasons. Now we're still exploring this map and we haven't really found a whole lot. It's been a bit of a disappointing trek thus far. But we have found a natural wonder. Um, let's be honest, most of us haven't heard of it as Uluru. We've heard of it as Ayers Rock. It's in Australia. And this is a natural wonder, as you can see. It gives you happiness for discovering it. Our happiness is now six rather than five. And if you work it, it has a unique tail yield. As you can see, it gives food and faith. Faith, obviously, as you would imagine, being tied to religion. We're not going to worry about religion right now, though, because we're nowhere near being ready and prepared for it. Let's just keep exploring. We've found more barbarians. We've nearly finished pottery as a technology. Ooh, we don't want to go that way, because that looks like a dead end. For a donut, this is a very weirdly shaped map. Maybe it was a ring map. Either way, we're going to keep looking. We've nearly at two population. That'll be nice. A lot of this map appears to be plains. Plains is this kind of lightish yellowy brown. It's got, a, as you can see, it had, provides one food and one hammer. Um, as a result, it doesn't tend to allow you to grow cities very quickly. We now have a second population point. So what do we want to work? We probably want to work the incense like the AI has told us we should. It provides one food, one hammer and two gold. Special resources, for example, like incense, wheat, wine, they give bonus um, yield to a tile, which would always uh, normally not give us much. We've researched pottery. It means we can now build the granary or the shrine. Shrine gives faith. Granary gives food. I can tell you for a fact which one we'll be building first, and it will be the granary. Because if we look in detail, it gives you two extra food. It also improves wheat and deer, both of which we have near us. So we're going to do that immediately. Also, because we're surrounded by plains and not grass, there's a grassland tile here. Uh, let's zoom into it. That grassland tile, as you can see, produces two food, no hammers. It makes um, growing cities much more quick, but they can't build buildings or wonders very quickly at all. We're still going to keep investigating. I have a sneaking suspicion that... Oh! Oh, hello. Well, isn't that interesting? Enrico Dandolo of Venice is the other AI in this game. Venice can't build cities. You may ask me then, how on earth does this empire work in this game? It. I'll explain as we go, actually. I've not actually seen what I need to explain to you about this yet, so I will show you when we see it. There are, there are cities known as city-states which Enrico Dondolo can uh, interact with uniquely, but as we haven't spied one yet, I won't talk too much about it. However, what I can confirm, because of the type of map, to our southwest we have Shaka Zulu, to the south we have Augustus Caesar, and to the southeast we have Venice, and we have another barbarian encampment there. I can guarantee for a fact which direction is going to be more aggressive. Venice doesn't tend to be that aggressive unless you start building cities right next to him. As he can't build cities of his own per se, he doesn't tend to be that aggressive. However, don't think he's a mug, because he certainly is not. I was actually tempted to play as Venice for this LP, but it's an incredibly complicated thing to do. And as I'm guessing most people that are watching here... Um, haven't played the game very much, whether it be on my own channel or on Yausha Alliance, which is where these videos are going first. Um, I'm not expecting people to be that clued up. So now we're going to adopt Liberty. Why? It gives each city we've got an extra culture. That means our next policy will be quicker. We're going for a long-term plan here. Ideally, I'd quite like to show off some of the Brave New World features, but at the same time, 
A domination victory is always a popular victory, and we've spotted Mount Sinai. It gives a lot of faith, as you would expect given its biblical references. But, again, we're going to ignore it. We could take it on and get our warrior experience, but it's much more important to scout the map. Ooh. 